Welcome to Bedtime Stories to Fall Asleep. My name is Vulcan and tonight we have one of Aesop's characters tuning in. No, it's not a bear, it's somebody else. You're going to find out who that is in just a moment. And by the way, if you're somebody who ever struggles with a lot of thoughts going through your mind just as you're trying to fall asleep, like a hamster on a hamster wheel going over and over, uh, thoughts and that's ever keeping you awake, you're going to enjoy tonight's story. So, let's get started. The lion was getting ready to sleep. He was resting under the shadow of a palm tree, right next to a crystal blue lake, and he was uh, resting his big head with his giant lion's mane on his paws and he was tired because for 35 minutes that day he had been chasing an antelope through the savannah and after 35 minutes of running he finally caught that antelope and he enjoyed some juicy antelope meat and because he had been running so so much he was obviously feeling tired have you ever ran for so long, 35 minutes, by the way, if you did? Congratulations. Most people, they get tired after just two minutes of running all those large cultures, but not the lion. He ran and he caught the antelope, and he also enjoyed some nice antelope meat. So now, after a good day of running, and after a good meal, he was feeling quite full and ready to fall asleep. So that was his goal right now. He was resting his big giant lion head on his giant paws and as he started lowering his eyelids he started trying to fall asleep. And that is when the gnat came. Do you know what a gnat is? You can google it. It's basically another word. It's a synonym for a fly. So we can actually replace it, Aesop, he's a little bit more old school, he used the word gnat, we can use the word fly, you and I. So let's use that because it also rhymes and we both know what a fly is. So a fly flew down and rested on the lion's nose. So what did that lion do? Did he just try to sweat it off or did he allow it to stay there? Well, at first the lion tried to swat the little fly away, but the fly stayed right there on his nose. So what did he do then? He decided, okay, let me take out my claws and show this little fly who's boss. So that's what he did. He took out his claws and slashed the fly. But the fly, sensing what's coming up, it flew very, very quickly up from the lion's nose. And as the claws came close to the lion's nose, what do you think happened? The lion slashed his nose, leaving big marks from his claws on his nose. He growled loudly. And then the fly went down on the lion's neck. Now the lion got angry again and he took out his claws again and he tried to slash the fly again. And what do you think happened? The fly just flew away once more and the lion slashed his neck again. Slashed his neck now. And then the fly went on the lion's back. The lion growled even louder. He took out his claws, he tried to slash that fly once more. But the fly just flew away once more, letting the lion leave marks on his back now. And then that fly rested on the lion's ass. Now, the lion had to make a choice. He could continue fighting against this fly and try to slash, or or he could try and accept what was going on and try to fall asleep instead. So the lion, he decided to fall asleep and leave that gnat 
just circling around, leave it to its own thing, do its own thing. So, going back to bed, he rested his giant lance head on his giant lance balls. He closed his eyes again. But the gnat, do you think the gnat just disappeared? Of course not. The gnat, seeing that the lion was trying to ignore it, he landed on the lion's cheeks, right on his face. Landing on his cheeks, he started going around. The lion stayed firm. He accepted it. He breathed in, he breathed out. It. This was uncomfortable, but he accepted it. The gnat fly went to his eyelids, right outside his eyes, but the lion, he stayed firm, he stayed accepting, resilient against the fly. The fly then decided to go to the lion's lips. That is right, land on the lion's lips, finally. And by the way, do you know what flies typically do throughout the day? A lot of flies, they circle around shit. That's right, so getting a fly right on your lips, that's nasty. That was the ultimate test for a lion's resilience. So what do you think that lion did? Did he stay there or did he finally throw out his claws again and try to slash the fly away from his lips? Well, before I tell you that, I want to tell you a story as it relates to flies and things that trouble us throughout the night because I think it's going to be very beneficial for you if you ever uh, struggle with thoughts throughout the night because this is something I've definitely had some trouble with. I would, when I had insomnia not, not very too long ago, I would have all these thoughts going throughout my head over and over and over again and I would try to slash them away like that lion. I would just say to myself, I just want to fall asleep. Stop thinking, I just want to fall asleep. And what do you think happened? I would just like that lion, I would scratch myself and I would give myself bad sleep instead. So, after two, three sleepless nights in a row, what did I do? I decided to accept. Oh, I decided to accept how shitty it was. I was having all these thoughts going throughout my mind and instead just breathe it in and breathe it out and let go. And as soon as I did, as soon as I accepted, that is when I got back to normal restful sleep and when I started going deeper into the psychology of sleep and cognitive behavior for insomnia and acceptance therapy for insomnia and all these resources, I found out that what I did was actually made a lot of sense because of this. Sleep is an unconscious process, meaning we cannot control sleep with our mind. Uh, it's like you can set an alarm clock for when you wake up in the morning, right? But can you set an alarm cl clock for when you fall asleep? Of course not, but that would have been pretty cool, actually. But we unfortunately cannot do that. We cannot, with our mind, we cannot control when we fall asleep. So instead, we want to let go of our conscious mind and let our unconscious mind let sleep into it. And how do you do that, you might ask? Accepting or just accepting uh, whatever negative things are going on. If you haven't slept, accepting that. If you have been having a lot of negative thoughts, accepting that as well. Anxiety, stress, just opening up and relaxing just like that lion relaxing with the gnat. And by the way, it's not it's not a weakness to relax and let go and uh, just do nothing. It's imagine, imagine James Bond. Imagine a fly laying on James Bond's face. Would he try to jerk it off? Or would he just be firm and stay there and maybe not even 
sense that there was a fly on his face. He wouldn't, he wouldn't even notice that. That is power. That is resilience. There is a lot of resilience and power that is built up from acceptance. So, going back to the lion and the fly, what did the fly, what did the lion do? Well, the lion taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out, he let go. He allowed that fly to stay there. And as the fly realized that he's not gonna irritate the lion anymore, it got irritated itself, so it flew away. And the lion fell asleep that night. And the fly, and the fly, do you think the fly just uh, went home? No, he decided to find another target to irritate and to try to test the sleep. What target did, uh, did that fly decide to go to? Maybe a coyote. Those things I hear, they're pretty annoying, keeping a lot of people awake at night. So maybe the gnat, how about the gnat goes to a coyote? Or maybe one of those birds who keep people away during 2, 4 a.m. in the morning. I would actually enjoy that. I've definitely had some bad experiences with seagulls gawking 4 a.m. in the morning. I, I wish that go to a seagull. That's what I say to it. What would you say to the gnat? Who would you like that gnat or that fly to go to and annoy during the sleep. Comment down below. No judgment. And with that said, we can say the end. And there we go. Here we'll end tonight's episode. So thank you for hanging out with me and listening to tonight's episode. And coming up next, uh, right now you have two choices. Uh, you can either watch another episode or you can hang out for a minute or more for me to tell you about what's coming up next, next week. So, next week, on January 10th, we have a bird, one of Oscar Wilde's characters, that is going to try and blind a man. That's right, a bird, kind of like a Hitchcock character, is going to take its beak and plunge it into the eye socket of a man and try to remove his eye out of his eye socket. Yeah, this is scary, so maybe if that's not your thing, um, January 10th, make sure you do not watch that. Make sure you avoid that. If, if you're a little bit uh, more weak, get it. Uh, for January 12th, though, seven days from now, next Sunday, what do we have coming up? Well, here's what we have coming up. Our lion is going to come back and he is going to get trapped as a mouse in a mouse trap by a lion hunter. That's right, a lion hunter. What's going to happen to our lion? Is he going to end up as a lion rug in front of the fireplace of a lion hunter? His head mounted above that fireplace? Well... Tune in next time to find out. My name is Vulcan. Dormio. Dormitor. Have a good night and a good sleep. I'll see you soon.